I was born in Mildura, but I grew up in lots of different places. My tribe is Wamba Wamba, Walker Walker, up near Swanell, bordering Wiradjuri and Yorta Yorta. My dad was a shearer, so he moved around quite a bit. When it was in the season, he was making good money, but when the strikes happened, it all fell to pieces. We'd be eating wheat bix for meals every day. Wheat bix and jam for breakfast, wheat bix and peanut butter for lunch, and wheat bix and Vegemite for tea. So mum and dad finally realised they couldn't afford to keep me, so I was sent off to live with my great grandmother on the mission. My dad was like a weekend dad, but there was always a drink, and he was jealous of my mum, so he was quite violent with us both. Any lesson he ever gave me, he gave me by the fist. He'd hit first and then talk. One time he said to me, What do you want to be, boy? You want to be black or you want to be white? I said, I want to be like you, Dad. I want to be black. So he punched me in the mouth and he's gone. If you want to be black, that's fine. But if you want to be white, that's fine. But remember, you've got a bit of both in you. He was a hard man back then and his opinion stayed the same today. So I lived up in Mildura until I was 12. And then I, I told my old man what he could do with his family. I couldn't wait to get out of there. I jumped in the luggage compartment of the old Red Rattler, which was going to Melbourne, and I got off at Ballarat and hooked up with my cousins. I had family bases right through from Mildura to Melbourne, and having been shipped around a bit when I was young, I had lots of places I could stay. Aboriginal families are pretty good like that, so you've always got some auntie or uncles you can go to and live with. My uncles were some of the best people you could come across, but they were boxers and drinkers and womanizers and bad crims. So I got brought up knowing quite a bit about the law. My dad didn't care. He didn't try to stop me. He said, if you leave now, don't bother coming back. My mum worried about me, but she didn't have much of a say. And you see, when I left, I gave my old man the right raw fuck you, and belted him for the first time. Um, okay, that's me. Um, and I just want to say after uh, Rebecca's uh, great paper um, that I represent the um, Design History Research Group at AUT and it is made up of women and men, Māori, Pākehā and even uh, an Australian. <laughs> uh, that was a little snippet of uh, an oral history project uh, that I did a few years ago and it was an attempt to, it was one of a whole series of films that uh, we did, and it was an attempt to make oral history uh, palatable, uh, maybe even interesting or even moving uh, for people who are not normally uh, into history. Um, and my perspective is that history uh, shouldn't be bookish, it shouldn't be an academic thing. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. Having said that, I am the sort of person uh, that will say to people, look at that typeface. That is a Nicholas Jensen type, well it was made from Nicholas Jensen's kind of typeface and the reason that's important is because Jensen and they will say, Dad, we're just trying to watch the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Any designer or historian will know what I'm talking about there. The message is clear, <laughs> don't have children. <laughs> um, I'm sorry about the, uh, the dull uh, layout uh, of this, but um, I only put it together yesterday. I'm sorry, Simon, you knew that. Um, and that's because uh, I just uh, flew back from uh, Australia where I was looking at the Design Research Archive at RMIT. And then that was five o'clock in the morning, I got back straight into exam board uh, where there was a whole class of students' results missing and a bunch of people needed this, and a bunch of things happening here. Timetabling for the, all of next year is due on Friday, and any academic knows what I'm talking about when I say that research is crucially important to universities, but it always gets shoved to the back because all of that other stuff has to be done first. What if there was a way to facilitate design research so that a huge amount of design history, people's stories, artefacts, plans, whatever, could all be collated into one place. Um, and apart from, there's not a lot of that happening, there's little bits of it here and there. Um, 
one place that I would like to mention is, of course, Michael Smyth's great book, New Zealand by Design. He's been mentioned, I don't know how many times, <laughs> at this symposium. So I'd like to pay homage to Michael's consistent, passionate, almost nagging support <laughs> of design <laughs> in New Zealand. It's been tremendous. So I think it's been Um, I'm beat number eight, why are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even mentioning it. Um, so that's, that, that kind of thinking is, is uh, where we started with the archive. But actually it did start um, a little bit more uh, with a guy called Warren Smith, who was a teacher at AUT. Some of you may have known him, he's been around for a long time. And he retired, and before he retired, because I was interested in, in history, I asked him about his experiences, and Warren um, may have started the first graphic design studio in New Zealand, and he has amazing stories to tell. Not just stories about the design side of things, but relationships, other industries, the clothes that people were wearing, um, all of that kind of stuff. And it's stuff that students need to hear. I'm just going to grab my water. Um, and I'll just show you a couple of things. Warren, when Warren left, he left a box filled with stuff. It was about to be tossed out uh, when we were sort of renovating the staff area. Um, and we said, hang on a second, what's, what's in this? And it was Warren's great hand-drawn pre-computer uh, graphic design work. And it was, there's tons of it. I've just got a little snippet, but you can see that. Thank you. Those little white out bits. Um, and this is stuff that students don't have any idea about now. You know, you might draw something up and then you chuck it into Illustrator and clean it up that way. Um, but, and some of you will have seen this in various places, but Warren puts his own feel to it. So there's a generation of designers who are retiring or have retired with this amazing mass of stuff as well as great um, oral history stories that they can tell us and that we can learn from. Um, and so the idea of the design research, uh, design history research archive is to gather this stuff together. Um, how do we do that? Well, it, it's been tried a number of times before. We went to our funding body uh, at AUT, one of them, and said, give us some money um, and we'll scope out how we do this properly so that we can create something that lasts and becomes self-sustaining. And so that's what we've done. We've just, we've just tried to speak to as many people as possible and look at where stuff is. So we've got to find stuff. We want to document stuff. We want to get designers to tell their stories. We want to run exhibitions and have some kind of digital form that everybody can access. So that's our archive and our imperatives are that it works with industry. Um, it's not some academic kind of thing. Obviously a New Zealand focus and a research focus. Um, we're looking at a bunch, uh, well, I've already been talking to people and um, if you haven't had me at your doorstep knocking, um, I'll be there fairly soon. Um, we want something that's not for history buffs um, and we want industry to offer up uh, key themes for things like the running exhibitions. Uh, if something is coming up, um, we want to identify what that is that's coming up identify it early so that we can then go to uh, funding bodies and target the funding bodies to get the resources to get the exhibitions on so that we can get the stuff out there. Um, and we're looking at these and a whole bunch of other uh, smaller funding areas um, and obviously philanthrop philanthropic partnerships with individuals, companies, hopefully um, Fisher and Paykel in New Zealand, all of those sorts of um, very New Zealand companies um, may be able to help out. Uh, exhibition venues and formats we're looking at. 
and we've already uh, spoken to Auckland Art Gallery uh, and they're on board uh, and very excited to um, have some uh, of our exhibitions there. Uh, I'm speaking to Te Papa straight after this meeting. And there's a whole bunch of uh, other galleries that have already been suggested to us. And there's symbi symbiotic relationships with galleries that is, uh, has, I think, huge potential. I don't know if anybody has been to uh, the Maritime Museum in Auckland recently. Um, that's what it looks like. If you're not into maritime stuff, it's a little dull. Um, it's really beautifully laid out, but it can be a bit dull if you're not into that kind of area. Uh, but the New Zealand Fashion Museum has collaborated with the Maritime Museum on, on um, a current exhibition. And this is, so that's the uh, New Zealand Maritime Playground. It's like a little house inside the museum with uh, stuff. And it also has a few costumes there. But here's where the, um, uh, the Fashion Museum have contributed. And as you go through, it moves into uh, a little fashion exhibition. Actually, quite a large fashion exhibition. And what they've done is they've looked at all of their stuff and gone, what's the stuff that relates to this exhibition? Pick that stuff out, and um, so now we've got this, this really cool symbiotic relationship. So there's some artefacts there, some of the uh, maritime museum things, and the costume stuff. So it's a brilliant idea, and I think it's got huge potential as ways for us to think about um, possibilities for how design could be going out there into um, various museums and galleries. Um, part, one of the problems that we've got when we're thinking about this stuff is uh, if you look at collections that people have, only about 4% of a collection tends to be on display. And so storage is like a major problem. So if we can have these little running exhibitions, it might be a way of generating interest, getting people together. Who knows, maybe we could even build something significant later on. I want to make it clear, this is not an AUT project. Um, we don't want it to be an AUT project. Um, it needs to be industry, universities, all of the universities, the community, uh, all coming together uh, to, to put this together. Our requirements are collaboration and participation and growth. It doesn't only need to be stories from years and years and years ago. Uh, one of the initiatives that we're thinking about here is going and uh, talking to people who are key uh, practitioners in the design area right now. And that's something that could move into a master's program. As a matter of fact, we've already got a, a master's starting with that sort of intention. Um, and if anybody else wants to have a master's program doing stuff like that, um, I'm more than happy uh, for them to come and talk to me. I know our um, upper management at uni may not be so keen on us talking to the competition about stuff like that, but um, let's just not tell them. And, um, you know, even better, maybe we can, all, all of the universities can get together and brainstorm how we can do something like this at that sort of postgrad level. Good God. Um, okay, so there's a whole bunch of possibilities that we're looking at. It's a resource for everybody. Um, the online resource, running exhibitions, a design research base, and a design museum. These are shots from RMIT's um, thing. It's pretty cool. It's extremely expensive. Doing something like this, the, their design archive, is long-term sort of prospect, but maybe we could do it even better. Uh, what do we need now? We need people's ideas. I've just given you a whole bunch of our ideas, um, but I'm sure that as I'm talking about it, other people are thinking about stuff that they could do. Information, every time I talk to somebody about this, somebody says, well, you should go and talk to Steve-O. He's got this barn over here filled with stuff. You should talk to Otago, what they're doing with this. You should talk. 
And all of that information, there's stuff out there in pockets all over New Zealand. Tell us and um, let's find it. Commitment and spirit, it's a lot of work doing stuff like this. We need people coming to the table, fresh ideas and excitement because uh, it is a really exciting project. Okay, that's it.